Hey guys, it's Kathy from FabulouslyForGold.com and today I'm so excited to share with you slow cooker lasagna and one hour breadsticks. Oh my word, it's so good. It's what's for dinner tonight, y'all. But I'm gonna be honest here because sometimes you, well, always, you hear the word lasagna and you're like, oh, that's a lot of work. No, doing it in the slow cooker is actually fantastic. Now, slow cookers and lasagna sounds really messy and like you're scrubbing the pot forever. That's no longer an issue because I love to use these slow cooker liners. So stick around, I'm gonna show you how quick and easy it is to do lasagna in your crock pot. And then the beauty of it is you still have energy, you can make some homemade breadsticks. Seriously, they take an hour and they're so good. Your family is gonna be so excited that you're cooking this for dinner. You ready? Let's go. I'm using a pound of ground turkey and then a half pound of sausage. So just use whatever you like to use, but that's what I've got today. I like to salt and pepper it and I'm using my super cool meat chopper tool. I'll link to that below, but it sure helps when you cook meat. And then we will drain the grease if you have any. And this is how I like to drain the grease. I get my flexible cutting board. I throw a couple layers of paper towels down and just pat that dry to get most of the grease out of there. And then you're gonna add two 24 ounce jars of spaghetti sauce. Now I left a little bit in one of those jars. I'm gonna use that later. Then you're gonna get a half to one cup of water and put it in your empty jar and put the lid on and just shake it up and then add that to your meat and sauce mixture. You just want a little bit of water in there to help the noodles cook. And then once that's simmering, go ahead and set that aside and then grab your handy scale if you've got one because we are gonna measure out some cheese. First, we're gonna start with eight ounces of ricotta cheese and then eight ounces of cottage cheese then one egg, and then here is our spices. One and a half teaspoons of dried oregano, one and a half teaspoons of dried basil, one and a half teaspoons of dried parsley, half teaspoon of garlic powder, half teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. Mix that in, and then you are gonna add in a half cup of Parmesan, and I actually forgot to, but you can add a cup of mozzarella cheese to this mixture as well. Add your slow cooker liner, just Make it fit in there nicely. Then remember the remaining sauce we had in the jar. You're gonna go ahead and just pour the rest of that in the bottom and spread that out for a thin layer of sauce. And then you're gonna start bringing in the lasagna noodles. Now these are not gonna lay out perfectly and that's totally okay. Then you're gonna add in some meat sauce. And I'm doing about a third of the mixture at this point. Then I'm gonna do some of the cheese mixture. And then I put on some mozzarella cheese and then, if you want, you can throw some spinach in here to sneak a few veggies in. Now, when it's cooked up, it's, it is kind of brown, and I thought my kids would notice, but they actually didn't. So, it's an easy way to throw in more veggies into this lasagna. And then we're gonna just repeat all of those layers again. So we got pasta, meat, cheese mixture, cheese, spinach, sauce, pasta, meat, cheese, cheese, if you have any extra sauce, throw that on, get your lid on nice and snug, and then you're gonna cook it for two to four hours on high or six to eight hours on low. It's been a few hours and I know you're not supposed to take the lid off, but I just had to peek and it smells so good. We've got just over an hour left and I decided because this has been so easy, I'm feeling adventurous and I'm gonna make some homemade garlic breadsticks. They're super easy and you can throw them together in an hour. So let's go check that out. All right, pretty simple recipe. I've got it here, I've also got it here. I've got my yeast, of course. I had some special kind that I bought during quarantine. This is like all I could find. It's meant more for pastries, but it actually works great on the breads too. Got my big bucket of flour. I got my KitchenAid, which you don't need. You can do this one by hand. And these are the spices you need for the garlic bread. I got my instant read thermometer to make sure my water is the right temperature and we're gonna go. Here's the recipe, but I've decided I'm not gonna use my paper. I've got my app right here because it's so nice to just check off things so I don't forget where I'm at or what ingredients I've done. So the first thing we're gonna do is get that yeast going in warm water. And my little trick is to use my instant read thermometer 
So you actually want to get your water between 110 and 115 degrees. I actually did it at 106 accidentally the first time and my yeast just wasn't bubbling up. So I dumped it and redid it and I googled to make sure I did it the right way. 112 is a lot better than 106. All right, gonna check those off my list and it's time to do the flour. Now, always remember with flour, you wanna scoop the flour into a measuring cup. We've got three and a half cups going right here. Check. And next, two tablespoons of sugar, one teaspoon of salt. We're gonna whisk those together and then we will stir in our bubbly yeast. So you can either stir this with a spoon or I'm using my KitchenAid. Just wanna get it nice combined. Now with my mixer, I do have to scrape the sides a little bit and then I'm gonna give it one last mix for about three minutes. And there we go. The dough is just sticky enough. It's all well mixed and we're gonna just let that rest for about 10 minutes. It's the beauty of instant yeast. And while that rests, I'm gonna get my butter mixture going. So you're gonna melt a half cup of butter and then go ahead and dump it on your pan and spread it out. Now you want the butter to stay melted, so go ahead and stick it in a warm oven. Check, check, check. Gonna clear the space, it's time to roll some dough. I like to spray my space with some olive oil and then sprinkle a little flour on it. And then I always spray my hands so they don't get too sticky. The dough has risen so quickly and beautifully. And we're gonna just pat it down and give it a roll. Again, I spray my rolling pin. You're gonna roll it to about the size of your cookie sheet. Doesn't have to be perfect here. Then go ahead and get a pizza cutter and slice up those strips into about one inch wide. So you're gonna fold the breadsticks in half, twist them, and then roll them in the butter in the pan and lay them out. And then you're gonna season the breadsticks with garlic salt, Italian seasoning, onion powder, and the key to making these fantastic is sprinkling some fresh Parmesan all over the top. Okay, lasagna is resting, and I'm about to put these breadsticks in the oven. They need about 15 to 20 minutes, and then dinner's on. Take a look at these beauties. Oh, they are so good. Don't they smell good too? Just perfect, this was 18 minutes at 375 in my oven. There you go, I hope you enjoy it. All the recipes are below, so check those out and I will see you guys next time.